Hey guys, how's it going? So you might recognize the garden behind me, but we're out at my parents' house today and I just brought a truck full of beautiful plants to plant in their garden. There's a couple of areas in the lower yard. We were out here last night and we were walking around with our coffee and we were just talking about some different plant options that they could put in in different areas and I thought it would be really fun to bring some of those things out today and get that done for them. So they are not here. I think they're in at work right now. I thought they might be here. Um, they've been having to work lots of hours this spring. It's been extra busy, uh, but they should be arriving at some point, but it'll be a fun day. I think Benjamin's just gonna be able to run around and play and let me show you the plants because they are awesome. So you can see the beginning of what we've got in here and they go all the way to the front of the bed. So let me remove the cover quick. Oh, aren't they so pretty? I'm just so excited. I'm actually kind of excited that they're not here right now because I think what I'd like to do is take all of these out and go place them where I think that they're, they're gonna go today. So just real quick, I do have the wild rose hookera, the crimson curls, I think is what it's called. I've got hosta wee. I just planted a bunch of these in my garden and I thought they would look cute here. Uh, there's a hydrangea, a Kodiak black dervella, which is kind of, I have those in there on their sides there, but you can see the leaves of the Kodiak black, gorgeous. I've got a few classic coral, dianthus, and then there's stuff for a hanging basket, got a purple fountain grass, some lobelia, and some ridiculous coleus. Oh, one more thing. I've also got five firefly peach sky yarrow. I ran out of room in the back. Okay, so now I'm gonna place them. I'll show you where they're all gonna go, kind of a general layout, and then I'm gonna plant. They've got to have a garden cart around here somewhere. Oh, the Cecil Bruner, Cecile Bruner roses are just absolutely glorious right now. Oh, and then a volunteer hollyhock that kind of bullied its way in. Look at that, and the view out there to the pool. Oh, peaceful. Oh, Aaron, look at this. Just look at that layering with the wild rose right there. Oh, it looks really nice. Isn't that pretty? And then cherry truffles. I think I called it crimson curls when I was telling everybody what oh. was in the truck. And then uh, wee hostas. Nice. Looks really good. And then down here, over here, Aaron, okay. I will show you. Come here, baby. Let's take a look at this area over here. This one's in more sun. So I have a little quick fire hydrangea right there. Uh huh. And then three classic coral dianthus. Cute face. You need your sunglasses, huh? And there's a Kodiak black dervella, which I think is gonna get too big for that spot, so we'll move it somewhere Kodiak else. Kodiak black? Yeah. Is that different from the orange? Yeah, so the leaves are more dark. Huh. The Kodiak orange, they're more orange. Hmm. Just have a few more things in the truck. All right, so now I'm trying to find a spot for the Kodiak black dervella. Oh, cute. <laughs> Benjamin was out here playing last night. We gotta find a sunny spot. It's pretty sunny out here. This is all really full. Hmm. This one may end up going back home with me. Everything's placed, not planted yet. I wanted to show you kind of how I have them laid out before I get them in the ground. And I'll also show you my pile of supplies I brought out. As I go through these flower beds though, really look at the different plants that are already here. I mean, there were some holes we were filling, but there's still a lot of mature, beautiful things that have filled in and the colors and textures are just on point. They're so beautiful and it's just, it goes to show how important it is to really think about those things in your flower beds. So like the next time you go out into your garden, really assess what colors and textures you've got going and like see if you need a grassy texture somewhere or if you need a little pop of yellow or some contrasting blue next to, next to some red, something like that. Um, it's just kind of fun to see how other people have done it in their gardens and so forth. So let's look at the plants. It's gonna be pretty comfortable planting this afternoon. Most of it's in the shade. So the first area here is notoriously hard to plant in, right underneath this massive blue spruce tree. But see, to the left here, we've got some beautiful white lamium, and then a spirea. It's got kind of a yellow tint, and then a red Japanese maple right above it. 
and then your blue spruce. Color and texture right there. There are some Patriot Hostas that have been here as long as I can remember, to be honest. Like, I think they were here when I was a kid or something similar. But I'm gonna backplant those with the Ridiculous Coleus because this is a color blaze Coleus that can do both sun and shade. So I think that it'll be beautiful to have them backing these bright Patriot Hostas. And then they've got a begonia basket on this pedestal, which they usually get so full you end up not seeing the basket by the end of the season. And then back behind, look at that birch tree. Isn't that the most spectacular form? Like it was once staked, well it is staked, and this tree has grown around the stake. See this? Ooh, there's a spider. Ooh, there's a spider on me. Hold on, ah, got it. <laughs> should be careful coming underneath this canopy. But the canopy goes way down the orchard wall. See the orchard rock wall goes down into that area there. And it just provides like this little fairyland under here almost like a little hideaway spot. And the canopy comes down right here. So I had a couple of wild rose hookahs. I brought five out, three of which are gonna be right down here but I only had room for three. Two will be perfect here. I might at some point bring a third out and just pop it right back behind so we've got a trio, but either way, I don't think it matters. I think it looks really pretty. This is a ranunculus. Isn't that beautiful? I'm actually gonna dig some of these, I think, today and take them home. I did that in our last garden and I had the most beautiful little patch of them. And I really want to have these in our garden. And then moving down, there are some geraniums here, which are fairly shade tolerant. You can see there's a little tiny patch of sun right here. And this area, if you look up above, I don't know how well you can see, there's just one little hole for the sun to come through. And so this whole area gets about one to two hours of sun per day. That's why I chose the plants I did. Those are the th other three wild rose hookahs. Isn't that gorgeous? Like without those, I think it would look really, it just looks like it needs it. It needs that punch of color. Um, there are some asters back behind, geraniums on either side. So the hookahs, and then we've got some Laguna Sky Blue Lobelia, which I've never planted this particular variety in the ground. So I think that this will be fun to try out. Lobelia usually does fairly well out here. In fact, they had it planted, I helped plant it in this flower bed for a tour one year. And then right here, we've got cherry truffles hookera and wee hostas which I love them together. We've got like a nice little hedge of both of them that end right by the lions that Benjamin and his cousins love to come down and pet like over and over again. But this is kind of an interesting situation because I'm dealing with some kind of awkward height things. So, wee hosta at maturity grows 11 to 18 inches tall. The cherry truffles hookah grows eight to 10 inches tall, the leaf canopy. But if you take into account how tall the bloom stalks are, you would naturally want to put those back behind the hostas because when they're blooming they're gonna be taller but the leaf canopy once the hookahs are done will be shorter i don't know i might end up doing this whole configuration differently to where i've got them more in blocks and less in lines if that makes sense but either way i think they're gonna look pretty down here you'll also notice that i don't space things out very much in this garden and you just don't get a garden that looks like this in the end by following spacing guidelines completely. I mean, you wouldn't, you wanna keep them in mind. You wouldn't put something that grows 10 feet wide, two feet away from something else that grows 10 feet wide because those things will not be happy together. They'll choke each other out eventually. So you wanna kinda of keep those things in mind, but you can fudge it a little bit. We always usually plant things a little bit closer together than the tag says. Um, plus this garden is really mature. So, you know, you're seeing things at their biggest and a lot of times the perennials will self seed or will spread themselves around a little bit and then you also in that way kind of get that lush full look. Oh here comes mom. She's gonna give her stamp of approval. <laughs> I wear the pants of the family so it's my approval that you need. <laughs> Oh, that's baloney. So my mom likes it, which is really fun. And I do think that we are going to block these instead of have them in two lines. But let me run you down and show you the sunny area that I've got laid out as well. Tools first. Did I show you all of this already? I don't think I did. Um, so Aaron got me all set up with the big auger today because it is the same size as most of the cans that we're planting. So we can kind of rock it back and forth in the hole as we're uh, auging the hole and it'll make a nice good size hole for those. I've got the stuff for the hanging basket, which is the chocolate drop coleus, rockapocal orange impatience, and the sweetheart lime sweet potato vine. And that hanging basket will be on this right here. So there's like an old stand of some kind and there's already a dripper 
right there. Then I've got my small auger for the lobelia and stuff I'm planting. Uh, potting soil, my starter fertilizer, gloves, and a shovel just in case I need it. Hopefully we don't have to use that. So now the sunny spot. Okay, so definitely different sort of landscape on this end of the flower bed. Um, but there is a cherub bird bath turned succulent planter right there. It's been the same succulents for years in that uh, top and there's no water to it at all. Right in this spot, there was something that had died. And so I'm gonna plant a little quick fire hydrangea that grows three to five feet tall. So it'll kind of block the view from the road, but it won't block the view entirely. There are three of these classic coral dianthus. Let me show you a tag here. So eight to 10 inches tall and 12 to 14 inch spacing, zone four through nine. So early summer bloomer, reblooming in early fall. And you can tell just by looking at this plant, not only does it have some bloom so you can see the nice color and they just pop in this area, but they are full of buds, just chock full of buds. And their foliage is beautiful, kind of blue color, which looks really good in this area because there was really nothing blue right here. Uh, and then there is a purple fountain grass and I got actually a couple of massive ones for our garden and I thought I'd just bring one out because I think it's perfect for this space because of course it'll be a foot and a half shorter once I get that root ball down in the ground. So you'll be able to see a little drift of roses right behind and I think it draws the color from the royalty crab apple. It draws your eye down like it connects this area um, and I think that's important to kind of have that weight. And it's got a beautiful texture as well. And my mom and I did scout around and we found a spot for the yarrow for sure. Um, and she's weeding that area right now so that it's nice and clean when we go to plant it. And then we are gonna go scout around and look for a spot for that Kodiak black Dervella because it's such a beautiful plant. And I've got one at home and I think they'd really enjoy having one out here. So now we're gonna just get these things in the ground. And then in the very end, we'll give you kind of the grand tour. I think it turned out amazing and the only thing that we weren't able to plant was the Kodiak black Dervella just because we couldn't find the perfect spot for it and I've got two more at home so I think I can find a spot for sure on the new property to put a little grouping of three of those so that'll work out really great but now I want to give you a tour of this whole flower bed area I think it looks just so pretty the neighbor is mowing his pasture over there so I hope it's not too loud I think he's kind of moving away from us though I think. I'm gonna kind of do this in order of how I planted it. And I planted these two hoograss, which are now in full sun first. These are wild rose, um, and they will only be in the sun for about an hour. It's just funny, this uh, flower bed just gets pockets of sun here and there throughout the day. And then the ridiculous coleus back in there I think looks really good. I know it's probably a little difficult to see with how dappled it, dappled it is, but we're hoping to do a late maybe like a late summer or fall garden tour here um, again this year so we can show you the progress of these. Much easier to see as we move this direction, 
I am loving this little spot right here. So the other wild rose hookahs, the uh, sky blue lobelia, and the hanging basket, which in here did two of the impatience, the sweet potato vine and the coleus. And as you know, this coleus is aggressive. <laughs> it will be huge, I think. So we'll see how things go. I'm sure that they will keep it kind of trimmed up. But I think that's just a really sweet pocket of color. And then this is how I ended up planting this area. I did five of the cherry truffles hookera like that. And then a little trio of lobelia, little patch of pasta, and another lobelia just to kind of tie that color together. But I th think that ended up being a lot prettier that way instead of you know, two rows of things. It looked a little bit too much like soldiers lined up in rows. Um, and it just wasn't very comfortable looking, I guess. That I think looks really nice. Right over here, I had two of the hookahs left because I didn't need all seven of them once I kind of reconfigured that area back there. So I did one on either side of this box, hoping, because they'll spread quite a lot, and maybe like kind of covering this box. I can totally feel their pain because we have an area where we've got four boxes and they've got three big boxes and a little round box over there. Um, but it worked out because I've got the yarrow. These are the firefly peach. One, two, three, four, and then five. And these were in sun earlier today, as was the back one. These will get it for a little bit longer, but I just, I told my mom that she's gonna love that one. So this was the next area, the little quick fire hydrangea, the purple fountain grass, the three classic coral dianthus. And I can actually smell those dianthus right now. They smell amazing. Looks like the breeze is starting to kick back up. But I do think, I think I mentioned this, the royalty crab apple, there's a bug on my hand. The royalty crab apple, there's some kind of darker colored sedum. And then the purple fountain grass, I feel like it's just such a good blend of kind of that deep colored foliage drawing your eye down. And that pink sure does, does bring a nice pop too. And then at the very end, I ended up with three extra hostas because of how we reconfigured the other end of the flower bed. My mom had already planted these incredible sunflowers. And I know it looks kind of weird to have sunflowers and hostas in the same bed, but in this garden, I bet you it'll work. <laughs> it's gonna be an experiment, but I think it'll work. I think it gets enough sun in the early part of the day to keep the sunflowers happy, but a lack of sun toward the last part of the day, like right now when it's usually the hottest, they get a reprieve. So I think they'll get enough sun and they will get enough protection that it might just work. Sometimes it does. And I just wanna walk you guys all over the place because I think our gardens change on a weekly basis. That you know that something's in bloom one week and then out of bloom the next week and something glorious is just coming into its own you know one day and it, i don't know it's really easy to miss stuff because there's just so many different things going on this is bishop's weeds weed right here um totally a garden thug but beautiful this right here is my probably my favorite view in their whole garden I just love it. So anyway, that's gonna be it for today's video. It just felt so good to get out of the house. It always does. It feels good to get out and go do something for somebody else in somebody else's garden and in this one in particular because it's so peaceful. It's And it's, you know, full of memories for me. So that's always fun. And I'm seeing a new project right in front of me that I think we might be able to come out and tackle maybe this week or next week. Uh, as well. So if you find the opportunity to go plant something for somebody or go work in their space, go weed for them. I mean, it blesses them, but it also does something for you too. And I think that's really important to remember. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. P.S. See this middle bed right here? They're about ready to take out this lavender because it's looking a bit long in the tooth. Look at that. I think I got something we can put there different project for a different day. <laughs>